Rita Moreno is joining the cast of Fast X as Dom's grandma. If she didn't already have the EGOT, <laughs> this would give it to this her, would, would it one. not? We have so many trailers for you, all of which I have watched. <laughs> Alonzo has not watched them, and that's okay. I appreciate your dedication to purity. I do. I get it. I, I, I like being a tabula rasa. What can I tell you? I hear you. So we've got a lot of that. Um, we've got actually a lot of news. But first, one of our coolest movie house shout outs ever. We are traveling to Alaska for this one Ooh. for the Beartooth Theater Pub in Anchorage. They're sort of like a mini Alamo draft house okay. in Anchorage. Um, they began life as a restaurant and it became a theater. And now they're both. And you can get craft beer from their craft brewery there. And uh, they do... Not necessarily first run stuff, but maybe things that have been out for a few weeks. So like they're going to be showing happening soon, which mm -hmm. we've reviewed here recently. Um, they do like cool documentaries about Alaska, but a lot of it is just the experience of being there together and this yeah. uh, having a little meal, getting a burger from the restaurant. And if you wanted to see Memoria in Alaska, that this was the place to go. <laughs> there you go. If you take your little tiny plane from whatever other faraway part of Alaska <laughs> that you're in and fly there. Um, but they're having some trouble since COVID, like so many theaters have and so many restaurants have and that is sure. with staffing and so they're looking for kitchen staff they're only doing matinees on the weekends because they just don't have enough staff to have mm. nighttime showings in the weekend so this is a place that definitely could use your eyeballs and your support the bear tooth theater pub in anchorage a really cool place it does great programming and uh, they have a beautiful art deco marquee and uh, we'll link to them below so good to see you guys out there we've got a ton of trailers the new Thor Love and Thunder trailer came out, which shows in all her majesty, totally buff Natalie Portman. And after all that, he reclaimed his title <laughs> as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I I created the picture that's uh, our our header this week. I was like, okay, yes, yeah, she's holding that Mjolnir all right. Uh, she is. That's so, what yeah, he's, he's shocked about that, that like somebody else, you know, is worthy of Mjolnir. Exactly. Besides Cap. Right. Um, so Jane. yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm real curious. I mean, you know, obviously I think they had to really sweeten the pot to get uh, Natalie Portman to come back. Um, but, you know, I think with between her and Taika Waititi, I'm real curious to see where this one goes. It looks fun. We also have the trailer for the horribly titled Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part, part one, one. <laughs> like how do you even punctuate all of that because there's already a colon in mission impossible and <laughs> oh, then there's like right. a dash <laughs> dash part one I, i'm confused semicolon i don't even know <laughs> Parent parentheses part one so anyway that's out and that's got of course all the things you want from tom cruise today is is tom cruise day apparently because it's top gun tuesday um yes. we're doing all the tops tops gun uh, the yes the the attorneys general and and go to <laughs> go to espn.com where christy is quoted in an article about tom cruise running it's really funny yeah my buddy it's ryan a Hawkins, long article it is running but he interviewed like me and jackie joiner kersey yeah oh yeah yeah no i i love that they, they did take the sports angle on all of this so that was really fascinating ryan hawkins smith friend of the show a long time listener so that was fun to talk about that we'll link to that below uh we have a trailer also for the david bowie documentary which is just premiering at can right about yes. now called moon age daydream this is done with the will and support of the Bowie estate, which is not something that anything else really has gotten, I don't think. Yeah, definitely. And so it's, it's Brett Morgan who did the Kurt Cobain montage of Heck documentary. And the you know early word out of can has been really great. Steve Pond wrote a rather effusive review for the rap. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Did you see the farewells on Saturday Night Live from some of the big cast members who were saying goodbye? I did. I did. They had, so they, we had, we had one last alien abduction for Kate McKinnon, uh, one last trend forecast from uh, uh, A.D. Bryant, uh, one last just sort of rambling whatever on Weekend Update from Pete Davidson. And then Kyle Mooney didn't really get like a show piece necessarily, but they, they had a fun sketch that had, you know, him and A.D. Bryant and uh, Kate McKinnon at the end of the show. So yeah, it was, it was all well handled. Yeah, I thought that Kate McKinnon got choked up at the end of her cold open there where she, she finally takes off in the spaceship with her alien friends. Mm. Um, so that was really sweet. She'd been there for a long time. The Dave Chappelle accuser is explaining why he rushed the stage 
he was angry about jokes he was making. This gentleman says he's bisexual. He was triggered by them. He wanted Dave Chappelle to know that it's not cool to do this. Perhaps there's some other way to express that sentiment besides rushing the stage. Absolutely. <laughs> I, no one here is condoning violence, yeah. um, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I think it is important that we do have this conversation about it yeah. because Chappelle doesn't seem to want to. No, and which brings us next to Ricky Gervais, who has a new Netflix special mm. in which like a few minutes in, he's making trans jokes. And then at the end, he says, of course, I'm just kidding. Everyone should identify as how they see fit. Everyone should live their lives as they see fit, whatever. You know, so he's trying to like have it both ways. Like, I think in the beginning, what he's joking about the fact that he's not supposed to joke about these things and it's punching down needlessly. There are a million other things you can make jokes about. And I don't even know that it's so much he wants to joke about this, but he wants to not be told that he can't. Right. Uh, you know, do, are you familiar with the phrase vice signaling? No. What is that? So, okay. So the, 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 uh, an accusation that assholes like to throw around is virtue signaling, whereby if you actually stand up on behalf of people who are having a shitty time of it or saying in public, hey, maybe you shouldn't be such a bag of shit, um, <laughs> that you're, you're virtue signaling. You're oh. letting everybody know what a great guy you are and how, you know, how, how progressive you are and blah, blah, blah. But there is an equal and uh, awful thing called vice signaling, which is basically like, check me out. I know it's going to tell me what to do. Fuck mm -hmm. you, you know? <laughs> and, and so that's just as boring. Yeah. And obvious and kind of adolescent, like you can't tell me to come home by curfew. I'll stay out. It's, it's very, you know, like, don't tell me I can't dad. be online right now. You're not my real dad. So it's, it does seem like that. Like it's a very childish and kind of petty and spiteful instinct. Yeah. I have thought he was funny. I have loved Dave Chappelle's comedy over the years. So Absolutely. it's disappointing to see this instinct from these people. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, which I think brings us to the Ellen article in the LA yes. Times. Yeah. Our uh, friend Matt Brennan at the LA Times did a really brilliant, thoughtful piece in Sunday's calendar section about the end of Ellen. Ellen's last episode after 19 seasons is this Thursday. And mm -hmm. it's all about, it gets its arms around how complicated she is as not just a pop culture figure, but as a queer icon. I mean, you please explain it better than I can. Yeah, I mean, so basically, you know, here's somebody who like, you know, changed the culture, you know, when she came out on her TV show and, you know, really kind of uh, uh, led the way for a lot of things and, and then went from being like this person whose sitcom got canceled for being too queer to being like the queen of daytime, you know, like your mom and your grandma would tune in every day to watch Ellen and she became like, you know, this sort of lovable figure who could bring different audiences together and could sort of speak for, you know, being the part of this, you know, minority that she was, um, but at the same time, very approachable and very cuddly and all that stuff, you know, following in the footsteps of, of Rosie O'Donnell. Um, but then over the course of, you know, her, her fame, you start to see, you start to hear all the stories about what's going on in that show and what a terrible environment it is and how like people are, are talking about how toxic a workplace is and how she's not doing anything about it despite her reputation for I'm so nice. And you know, first everybody in LA has an Ellen story, you know, yeah. about her being not so nice. And then like her defense of Kevin Hart or her sort of glib defense of hanging out with George W. Bush or, you know, getting called out by Dakota Johnson. You just sort of, you know, it, 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 she kind of brings upon herself this whole, you know, what's happened to her career. And it mainly has to do with the, the sort of cocoon that happens mm -hmm. when you become a certain level of rich and a certain level of famous. And you just think that the, the stuff doesn't apply to you anymore. And when the people that you're trying to defend are your other rich and famous friends, even if they're doing something shitty, um, you know, then that's, you become this level of tone deaf and you alienate a large swath of your audience. And I think one could point to Chappelle and Gervais as being yeah. in the same boat. The, no one is there to tell them, hey, maybe don't, um, you know, and they think they that whatever they do is brilliant and, and whatever they do is great. And they lose sight of what actually is happening in the world because they are ensconced in their, you know, their luxury and privilege. 
Indeed. Well said. I cannot add to that at all, um, but I will link to Matt's piece down it's below. Piece. It's really good. X is out on Blu-ray and digital. We reviewed that maybe a month nice. or so back. So uh, go find that review. And then an exciting- You'll put the link below, right? We will put the link below or maybe in the end card. If you want to stick around to the very end of our video, there there's a little go. end card and we can go right to it. And there's some exciting casting news. Rita Moreno is joining the cast of Fast X as Dom's grandma. If she didn't already have the EGOT, <laughs> this would give it to this her, would, be would it one. not? Hey, they better let her drive one of those cars. Oh, for sure. She better yeah, not be yeah. just like showing up for Sunday dinner because it's hashtag family. Like she better <laughs> go to drive one of the cars. Yeah, yeah. She needs to pull up in like something real vintage and Detroit muscly. Yeah, absolutely.